Greetings, my fellow from Love Sovereign Thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Friday, June 9th, 2017. Yes, I uh, had some obligations I had to fulfill. I make a living, so. <laughs> and it's been long hours. So, um, just recuperating and managing. All that good stuff. So bear with me. And I am at CJ's Java Lounge located at 400 Southwest First Avenue along the New River of Fort Lauderdale. Right along the southwest section of the Andrews Avenue Bridge. So technically I am we're south downtown. Or near the courthouse and all that. So it's, it's within the area. Yeah, so I'm just, uh, you know, going to be talking on a few topics. And the funniest thing is the whole James Comey extravaganza. That corrupted parasite that he is. Everyone hyped it up. They were manifesting folks. They had the bars open. They packed the place to hear his dumbed-down or tyrannical rhetoric. And like I said before, I'm not a worshiper of President Trump, okay? And based on, if you know some of my past episodes, I was real critical of him that would sell his butt to Saudi Arabia, keep the status quo going, etc., to an extent. Before I proceed, I know they had the whole Theresa May um, uh, ordeal, well, I like the whole election stuff. So the puppet Theresa May looks like she won her seat as prime minister. However, they lose the majority. Her team or the conservatives lost the majority in the British Parliament. And of course there was another London attack. So are they going to lock down all bigger cities under martial law and go, we're doing this for your safety, your protection, you need us. We're government. To an extent. Be aware of that. To my brothers and sisters out in Great Britain. And a big shout out to David Ike and Richie Allen. Wish you brothers well. So, speaking of that, the distraction of Comey. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't watch it. But I knew it was going to be a dog and pony show, as far as I'm concerned. Propaganda. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> and, oh, there was that zombified Theresa May. He's like, yes, I do sell my rear end to New World Order. I will, you say, we got a new Brexit, but I'm going to screw you guys here as well. Okay, sorry about that. I am being sarcastic and digressive at the same time. Without further ado, let's just check this out. Of Comey. Phony Comey does it again, right? Okay, it's by uh, John Rappaport from No More Fake News. He has his little blog. It says here, James Comey stars in another bad movie. <laughs> it came out today, by the way. Where was a devastating revelation about Trump's crimes during James Comey's congressional testimony yesterday? Who produced this stinker? Find out and fire him. I thought I was the head of a movie studio. Apparently, I'm marketing sleeping pills. I conked out after watching five minutes of Comey. <laughs> if James Comey's testimony before Congress yesterday were a Hollywood movie, and if the press weren't obliged to make a very big deal out of it, the studio that produced it would have shut it down and eaten the box office lo losses. The movie theaters would have been empty, expect a few stragglers getting out of the rain. We did learn that Comey leaked his memo on a conversation with Trump about the Michael Flynn investigation to the press. So, the FBI director is a leaker. And we only have Comey's word that this memo notes were correct and accurate. Then Comey stated that Attorney General Lawyer Lynch told him to call his investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server a matter, not an investigation. 
So the former attorney general was a partisan Hillary supporter, and, and she is an angel mama to the One World Order that praises the Strong Cities Network in Washington, D.C. <laughs> How fascinating. These role models are fantastic, right? Please. I want to continue on here. Comey asserted that Trump pressured him into seize investigating Michael Flynn. Trump didn't order Comey to stop that probe, and Trump could have because the president in the chain of command is over and above the Justice Department and the FBI. Oops. That's right. Attorney Alan Dershowitz, Comey confirmed that under a constitution, the president has the authority to direct the FBI to stop investigating any individual. I paraphrase because the transcript is not yet available. The president can, in theory, decide who to investigate, who to stop investigating, who to prosecute, and who not to prosecute. The president is the head of the unified executive branch of government and the Justice Department, and the FBI will work under him, and he may order them to do that he wishes. As a matter of law, Comey is 100% correct. And I have long argued, and as Comey confirmed in his written statement, our history shows that many presidents, from Adams and Jefferson to Lincoln to Roosevelt to Kennedy to Bush 1 and to Obama, have directed the Justice Department with regard to ongoing investigations. The history is clear. The presidents are clear. The constitutional structure is clear. And common sense is clear. Under Article 2, my friends of the U.S. Constitution, look it up. Was Comey investigating Trump's Russian connections? Business Insider, President Donald Trump's private attorney, Mark Kazowitz, on Wednesday said his client felt completely and totally vindicated by James Comey's prepared opening statement to the Senate Intelligence Committee. Comey's remarks, released Wednesday in advance on a Thursday Senate hearing, confirmed previous statements by Trump that Comey that had told him three times that he was not personally being investigated amid the FBI's wide-ranging inquiry into Russia meddling, Russian meddling, in the election and the Trump campaign's possible ties to Russia. So, where Comey's revelation yesterday? Nowhere. Where were his explosive charges about Trump's crimes? Nowhere. Comey should really take a long vacation. He should disappear from from public life for quite some time. He's embarrassing himself. Recall the last bad movie Comey starred in. The Hillary email server scandal. The FBI probe was off. It was on. It was off. Earlier in this fiasco, Comey delivered a televised press conference. FBI directors do not don't hold press conferences, but Comey did because he's so special. He simultaneously played the role of the FBI head, grand jury, attorney general, and constitutional jurist. He only held one of those jobs, but that didn't stop him. He laid out end-to-end Hillary Clinton's violation of federal law governing the handling of classified materials. He failed to note that hostile intent is no part of that law. He failed to note that negligence is the only standard for prosecution. He said that since Hillary, who was surely diligent, didn't attend to cause harm to the nation, but wasn't recommending prosecution. Now that should have been subject the subject of a congressional constitu- congressional hearing, but it wasn't. Before that, Comey st- starred in a little-known movie called HSBC. In 2013, before his appointment as FBI director, Comey was brought in by the scandal-written HSBC bank to oversee efforts to clean up its acts, in particular money laundering for drug cartels. Comey was positioned as a face of honesty and competence for HSBC. How well did he do before he exited his his position? How much crime and how many criminals did he leave behind? Three years later, after Comey had departed, the New York Times wrote, HSBC bank executives faced charges in $3.5 billion currency fraud case. Trader uses front running to profit from client orders. I guess Comey didn't clean up the HBC mess. There were a few things he didn't notice while he was there. A few things he left behind. A few billion things. I guess that uniquely qualify him for appointments FBI director. So 
Here is my memo. It is direct. It's directed to Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and the Sword of Hollywood Studios. Before you sign Tom Hanks, Alec Baldwin, Stephen Colbert, Michael Moore, or Catelyn Jenner to star as James Comey in a heroic bio- biopic. Don't cry for me, America. Check your brains. It's a loser. <laughs> I have no arguments here, my friend. I think this is hilarious. Okay? And and if you go to Judicial Watch, look up James Comey. All the corrupt scandals he was involved in. Didn't do a damn thing. But he went out of his way to go after Trump and the so-called Russian connection. So bias, do lang, do lang, a corrupt this, do do lang, do lang, a bend over Bob to Hillary Clinton and Loretta Lynch, you know, just to give you guys a great heads up of how dumb and pathetic this whole smoke and mirrors extravaganza. Everyone there that may have seen it and manifested it about he's going to get Trump. It blew back in your faces, okay? You got a good attitude adjustment. You crash into a wall, and if you're still complaining, too bad. You just wasted a amount of your energy. There's a lot of hectic ordeals that's happening around the world, including the United States, and you're worried about Trump with the so-called Russian connection. A dead, a beaten, a dead horse topic. I hear this stuff on Facebook too. You're just wasting your energy. So all you folks that believe the hype, you've been punked, duped, swindled, etc. But I will continue on here. Well, it came from Liberty Blitzkrieg. Michael Krieger just came out yesterday at 302. And he made a statement about the Comey testimony is great for Trump, terrible for Democrats. The unanimous was a very smart person take on Trump's firing of James Comey. It is that a political disaster which will lead to total ruin and possibly his impeachment. I disagree. The key fact that will determine how it ultimately turns out hinges largely on whether or not there was actual coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russian government to sway the election through hacking or other nefarious means. Personally, I don't think there was, which is why I don't expect Trump to be removed from office. The consensus views right now is that Trump's firing of Comey offers further circumstantial evidence that he's trying to cover up coordination with Russia in order to end the ongoing investigation. This is certainly a possibility to consider, but it's definitely the only possibility, nor it's the most likely explanation. As for the last month's post, this consensus echo chamber take on Trump firing Comey is all wrong. I've been warning necessarily for months that the Democratic Party is on the verge of blowing itself up in a mushroom cloud of Russian conspiracy theorizing. Many high-profile Democrats, corporate media hacks, and partisans of all shapes and sizes have spent Donald Trump's first six months screeching about how the president is a Russian agent who conspired with Putin to rig the election against Hillary Clinton. Of course, if there is any truth to this claim, Trump should justify they be tossed from office. The problem is we haven't seen any proof. Most likely, none exists. You can already see Democrats trying to pivot too, but Trump tried to obstruct justice. Sorry, but the based on what I've seen so far, this just ain't gonna fly. The public's expectations have been far too intentionally and essentially infiltrated by Democrat politicians and corporate media pundits. Anything less than proof of collusion between Trump and Russia to influence the 2016 presidential election will likely be seen as a win for Trump. This is what happens when you really 
stupid strategically and decide to put all your eggs in the Russian conspiracy theory basket. As such, despite there being all sorts of investigations going on, I don't expect anything to emerge that this will lead to an impeachment of Donald Trump. Considering what we know about how Democrat domestic spy agencies operate, I strongly believe we've seen leaked proof by now if Trump colluded with Russia to influence the election. That said, the Democrats will never let this go because it will force them to talk about real issues like Wall Street oligarchy ol- and imperial foreign policy, but they don't want to do that. That's the dirty little secret. Since the Democrats largely agree with Trump on many of his most heinous policy stances, they have to come up with an overseas boogeyman to obsess about. This has been... This what this has been. That's what it was. That's what this has been. Tongue tied there. This, since the day, since day one, as such, there has continued to be no functioning opposition party in America at this time. Unfortunately, but true. Unfortunate, but true. Enough of that, though. Let's get to the point of this post. The Comey testimony we knew today would probably be a good time for Trump last night. When a prepared statement was released, an interesting analyst was written by Sean Davis over at the Federalist. Here are the first few paragraphs. You can look at that link, too, on the Federalist. Just look at the Federalist. It's on, it's on there, okay? Ahead of the former Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, Director James Comey test- testimony before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Thursday, the committee released the seven-page prepared statement Comey provided on Wednesday. While it is clear that Comey and his allies believe that I mean, the statement is proof that the president, Donald Trump, acted inappropriately or perhaps even illegally. The, the statement itself is a much bigger indictment of Comey's own behavior over the last six months. Not only does Comey's statement corroborate Trump's claim that the former FBI director told him three times that the president was not being investigated by the FBI. It also reveals the Beltway game Comey was playing with the investigation. In his statement, as many colleagues Molly Hemingway noted earlier today, Comey acknowledged the accuracy of Trump's claim, including the later announcing Comey's firing, that Comey had on three separate occasions informed Trump that he was not being investigated by the FBI. The corroboration of the claim by Comey himself is by far the most newsworthy nugget from the lengthy statement, but several other claims from Comey also do far more to indict Comey than to implicate Trump. The most damning aspects of Comey's prepared testimony is his admission that he deliberately refused to inform the public that Trump was not being personally investigated by the FBI. Comey's justification for this refusal to publicly disclose material facts that those facts might change. It's laughable, especially in the light of Comey's 2016 two-step regarding the investigation of Hillary Clinton. It did not tell the president that the FBI and the Department of Justice had been reluctant to make public statements that we did not have an open case on President Trump for a number of reasons. Most importantly, it would create a duty to correct should that change? Comey claims. We call that in 2016, Comey had no problem. One, publicly exonerated Hillary Clinton despite the fact that the authority to charge or not charge the charge, someone with the crime lies with federal prosecutors, not the FBI. Two, the using the same press conference to escalate Clinton's behavior. Three, telling Congress that the investigation of Clinton was closed, and then four, announcing days before the presidential election the FBI had reopened a case and was once again investigating Hillary Clinton, yet were supposed to believe that James Comey had gave had grave moral concerns about disclosing facts that may be subject to change. Please. If anything, Comey's latest statement only highlights why Trump was justified in firing Comey in the first place. Comey, according to his own testimony, reportedly told Trump that the president was not being investigated by the FBI. Not only that, Comey also told Congress that Trump was not being personally investigated. 
on how how on earth it is inappropriate in the light of those facts for the president to ask for those facts to be made public by the very individual asserting them. Trump's exasperation looks far more justifiable given the behavior to which Comey admits in his own testimony, largely because Comey's tortured explanation for refusing to publicly explain those facts, even after disclosing them to Congress, holds so little water. It is that part, this is, that, it is this last part about how he informed Congress, which he will prove most harmful to Democrats. It seems many of them knew Trump wasn't being personally investigated yet, still went around yelling and screaming about how he's a Putin puppet. This is not a good look, and nonpartisan Americans will see right through it with complete disgust. Next, we arrive at the most damaging aspect of the testimony for the Democrats and the Obama administration specifically, which we know couldn't prosecute an elite criminal if their lives depended on it. The revelations about Loretta Lynch instructing Comey to use Clinton campaign talking points to describe the Hillary email investigation is unquestionably shady. Even Comey thought so. The Daily Call reports Loretta Lynch, the former general Attorney General under Barack Obama pressured former FBI James Comey to downplay the Clinton email server investigation only and only referred to as a matter. Comey testified before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Thursday. Comey said that he, when he was asked Lynch if she was going to authorize him to confirm the existence of the Clinton email investigation, her answer was yes, but don't call it that. Call it a matter. When Comey asked why, he said Lynch wouldn't give him an explanation. Just call it a matter, she said. He's one of those bumpers. Okay, boss. Yes, mistress. Comey added later that he was concerned about that direction, direction as it was false. He was further concerned because it aligned with the Killick campaign spin on the investigation. Lynch's orders, Comey said, concerned me because that language tracked the way the campaign was talking about the FBI's work and that's concerning. I don't know whether it was intentional or not, but it gave the impression that the Attorney General Lynch was looking to align the way we talked about work with the ways the work with the way the political campaign was describing the same activity was which was inaccurate, Comey added. Comey also cited Lynch secret tar- tarmac meeting with Bill Clinton as a reason he chose to hold pre- the press conference, he said, as he was concerned about preserving the independence of the FBI. The Clinton campaign consistently sought to mislead the public and denying that Clinton was a subject to an FBI investigation. Instead, the campaign claimed the investigation was simple security inquiry. Comey said he was concerned by Lynch's pressure on him and the FBI to use Campaign, the campaign spin, as it appeared, it as it appeared, it appeared that Lynch was intentionally trying to align the language the FBI was using to match the angle pushed by the Clinton campaign. Just like that, con- concerns of Trump trying to obstruct justice in his conversation with James Comey gets watered down considerably in the minds of the American public. Next, there's the admission from Comey that the story published by the New York Times on February 14, 2017, titled. Trump campaign aides had repeated contacts with Russian intelligence was essentially fake news, and there's a clip for that. Check it out yourself. He touched upon the topic another time when under under questioning from Lankford. Here's a brief exchange. Lankford, okay, you had mentioned before about some news news stories and new news accounts without having to go to into all the names at specific times and to be able to dip into all that. Have there been any news accounts about the Russian investigation on co- or collusion about the whole event as or as you read the story, were you wrong about how wrong they got the facts? He said, yes, there have, have, there have been many, many stories based on, well, lots of stuff but about Russia that are dead wrong. It's pretty much proved what many of us have long suspected that many of the, these media stories are being fabricated by anonymous sources. This is why we should always be skeptical of what we hear from the agenda-driven, billionaire-owned corporate media, especially when the sources are anonymous. To summarize today's Comey testimony, was a huge win for Trump 
and pretty much a disaster for the Democratic Party. While Trump will remain under pressure from various investigations, all the new important revelations today seem to portray Democrats and, and Obama cronies in a poor light, while negative stuff surrounding the Trump team, Flynn in particular, was already widely known. This is what happens when you make a huge claim of treason, then find you can't back it up. Finally, the most concerned thing to the Democratic Party should be the fact that there have been many flash, flashing warning signals leading up to this. For example, take a look at the facts presented in a recent political article. There, in, there, there are here and there warning signs that maybe the Democrats might want to, you know, focus on their own political problems. In April, the Democratic National Committee has its worst fundraising month in nearly a decade. As we've seen in the crucial state during the 2016 contest, African-American turnout remains a serious concern. The voters of immediately red state Montana just elected a guy who has been charged with assault instead of a seemingly competent Democrat with a clean police record. Reporters who actually spoke to voters in places like Ohio seem to have found some drugs over the Russia frenzy. More than two-thirds of voters, according to at least one of the ABC News Washington Post poll, if you believe polls anymore, said the Democrats were out of touch. The Democrats, yes, the Democrats scored lower than Trump and the Republicans on that issue. Trump, meanwhile, is trying to regain his message on border security, tax cuts, Obamacare repealing and telling off Europeans to their faces. You know the, the kind of politically incorrect, occasionally rude things that actually ended up helping him win the election. A few weeks ago, a sociologist at Columbia University flatly predicted that Trump will be reelected in 2020 and an even crueler blow to the Democrats. An ABC poll released in April found that Trump would beat Hillary in a popular vote if there was a hypothetical rematch. A rematch that at least one humble genius long ago predicted. I tweeted the following month ago when Don, when, what, when everyone thought Trump was about to go down in flames, I stand by and I stand by him. Trump has a far chance better at a second term than being impeached. Democratic leadership are either the dumbest people in America or the most corrupt. Probably a combination of two. And he's absolutely correct. Remember, my friends, witch hunting is the road to blowback. You see these ass-wipe news stations like the Counterfeit News Network and MSNBC are still talking about it. You know why? Because you individuals out there are brainwashed Diagnose, or other words, diagnosed with the Jim Jones syndrome. When will you wake up? Your political party, partisan worshiping fetishes got you nowhere. Now, I've been saying this for a long time, my friends. Both major parties are in deep cahoots. And the Democrats, on a, especially on a national level, are stripped naked. So do yourselves a favor. All those folks out there still want to talk about it? As far as I'm concerned, it's done. Here's my answer to the continuance of the pathetic, blasphemous song and dance on the Trump Russian connection. Plain and simple. Self explanatory. And you know what? I'm not going to stretch it anymore. Okay, so Okay, sorry about that. They had a little, little yawn. 
Sorry about that. Had to do a little yawn. Okay, so with all that distraction propaganda is out of the way, I'm about to just talk about the Tehran terrorist attacks. Who was behind the Tehran terrorist attacks? This came out yesterday by Stephen Lemon for Global Research. Oops, excuse me. And it's a very good um, synopsis here. And it says here, Key is asking who the who most has motive. Who benefits most? Why was Iran attacked? Why now? Perpetrators of incidents like Wednesday's twin terrorist attacks in Tehran likely have backers planning and orchestrating things with specific objectives in mind. The Tehran attacks killed at least 16, injuring dozens more, the severest incident in many years. Charting key symbols of the 1979 revolution suggesting more of the same may follow. Heavy security protecting Iran's modulus or parliament was penetrated. Henceforth, Ayatollah Khomeini's shine will be more diligently guarded. Attacking it was the equivalent of terrorists targeting the, the Statue of Liberty, Lincoln Memorial, or the Washington Monument in America. Security is always heavy in Tehran and other key areas in the country, likely to be stepped up henceforth. Since the 1979 revolution, Iran has been targeted by America and Israel for regime change. Saudi Arabia is a key adversary. On Wednesday, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards issued a statement saying Wednesday's attacks came days after Trump's meeting with the ruler of a regional ra- reactionary regime involved in supporting Tafkari terrorists, blaming Rada and Washington for what happened, adding the IRGC has proved that it would not leave unanswered the shedding of incident, innocent blood. The IRG's second-in-command, General Hassan Sal- Salami, said, We will remain steadfast in fighting terrorists and we will surely take revenge on terrorists, their affiliates, and their supporters for the blood of the martyrs of today's two terrorist attacks. A statement by Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said, The Iranian nation will prove once again that it will crush any plot or scheme by ill-wishers through unity and solidarity and its powerful security structure. The Iranian Islamic Revolution leader Ayatollah Sari Ali Khamenei made similar comments expressing resolve and to defend the nation effectively. Hours before the attack, Saudi Foreign Minister Adel al Jabor said, Iran must be punished for its interference in the region. What? Weeks earlier, Saudi Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman vowed to battle Iran in its territory, not the kingdom's homeland. Saudi Arabia is the epic center of regional terrorism sponsored by rogue Arab states following Wednesday's incident. al Jabir turned truth on his head, saying, We condemn terrorist attacks anywhere when they anywhere they occurred, and we condemn the killing of innocent anywhere it occurred, denying Radi involvement. ISIS claimed responsibility for the incident, the group supported by Washington, NATO, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and other regional rogue states. They have all the motives to destabilize Iran. They benefit from weakening Tehran if achieved. Iran is targeted for its sovereign independence, its vast oil and gas reserves, Washington wants to control. It's Israel's key rival, regional rival. It is involved in defending Syria from U.S. orchestrated aggression, waiting regime change in both countries. Wednesday's incidents followed President Rouhani's re-election. It came at a time when Iran, Hezbollah, Russia, and government forces continue making progress against America's imperial project in Syria. Trump outrageously blamed Iran for what happened. A World a White House statement turning the truth on its head saying state sponsored states that sponsored terrorism risk failing victim to evil they promoted. Okay. <laughs> right, guys, before I proceed, President Trump, do yourself a favor, read blowback by Charmers Johansson. Stop listening to your cronies and think for yourselves. Washington, NATO, Israel, and Saudi Arabia are 
its leading perpetrators. Iran is one of the key opponents. Its opposition to the imperial projects of America and Israel leaves it vulnerable to hostile acts by both countries and their rogue allies. Terrorism doesn't exist in a vacuum without foreign backing. Thank you. It can't exist. Incidents and similar to Wednesday's coordinated attacks in Iran can happen anywhere. Sponsors of ISIS and like-minded groups wish to target. Washington seeks unchallenged global dominance using these groups as imperial foot soldiers. As long as there is ruthless persists, the scourge of terrorism will continue threatening humanity. A final comment. On Thursdays, on Thursday, Iran's security ministry said five of the terrorists involved in Wednesday's coordinated incident in Tehran earlier left Iran and conducted terrorist activities in Raqqa and Raqqa and Mosul. Last year, they returned to the country under the leadership of the commander Abu Aish to carry out terrorist attacks in the holy places of Iran. Iranian security services eliminated Abu Aish. Its intelligence ministry said three teams were involved in Wednesday's attacks. Some of the members arrested before the incident occurred. I'm going to tell you this. Keep your confounded hands off of Iran. I am not lovey-dovey with the government also. But I do recall reading... The 1953 coup was done by the CIA, Operation Ajax, which I'm definitely going to add this to the link, which was actually posted August 19, 2013. And all you jackasses out there, you see, we should attack Iran. I want your ass, I want your behinds in the front line, including Trump, all you Trump supporters. If you believe Iran should be attacked, go on the front line. If you don't, if you don't like it, shut the hell up. It is nothing more than a monumental lie. But definitely I'm going to add that to it. And there's a video I'm going to put on here in my footnotes as well. I think this is very essential. It is the crosshairs in Iran, of, in Iran. Because it has to be addressed. For sure. I ain't going to add that, to the, add that on a, new, a news buzz link. That was done by Kurt Nemo. make that happen. Excuse me here. I'm just doing this as we speak. It'll be under geopolitical report. And I want all you folks to examine the bigger picture. It came out May 1st, by the way. Just to give you folks a heads up. And if I'm correct, there's a YouTube site. So... Yep, it is a YouTube site, so I'm gonna, I am gonna add this to the memo because you, folks take the initiative on examining this and counter these sons of bitches, neocon parasites, on this topic. And you tell them piss on your empire, plain and simple. So, and another thing interesting too, what Iran means in Persian, land of the Aryans. Uh, but I like a lot of you folks don't know about that. If you study the history of Persia, and you have a chance. Like I said before, I'm not a fan of their government. Okay? But time to not say no to attack Iran, period. No war on Iran. All right. Finally. short and sweet, but why not? This one came here from the shtfplan.com by Daniel Lang. It's entitled Burn Them and Their Families as Islamic State Crumbles. Vigilantes are running amok in Iran. It's hard to appreciate the effect that effect ISIS has had on ordinary Iraqis and Syrians who wanted nothing to do with terror group. There are cities in these countries that have been ruled by these monsters for several years. Monsters whose cruel Cruelty and depravity knows no bounds. 
most people in the West can't imagine what it must be like because the vast majority of us have never lived under those conditions. So what does happen to people who have been living under ISIS for so long? We'll try to imagine what would you do if a bunch of lunatics have been running your community for several years. Imagine if they cut off, cut you off from the outside world, tortured and killed family members and neighbors, sold fat female relatives into sexual slavery and indoctrinated your children. Some people manage to move on with their lives after those conditions pass. Others do not. In Iraq, for instance, there are now vigilante groups that have risen in the wake of the Islamic state's collapse. They are targeted members of ISIS as well as their families. Eleven suspected jihadists were recently found blindfolded, bound, and shot dead on the side of the road 20 miles, 20 miles south of Mosul are some of the victims' groups in which, on its Facebook page, the page tells supporters, burn the families and homes of ISIS members. The vigilante group, which has dubbed themselves as dubbed themselves the Haman al Ali Revolution, created a Facebook group to launch revenge on ISIS members in May. It has now 650 members. Soon we will start our operation. We are locating their family. Families. Read the final post on the page from May 28th. We will make them regret joining. Good luck, everyone. It signs off. This is what happens when law and order breaks down. People just don't medi out justice. They go. They are free to go on a bloody ram on bloody rampages. Today we are we targeted Muhammad Asraj. We threw two, two grenades and attacked the family with gunfire, as they do to the, do to us. The post said. The Facebook page post address of dead and imprisoned ISIS fighters encouraging its members to go after them and their families. Groups told his followers last month to burn them and their families. As one member of the group sort of telegraphed, this was carrying out attacks as revenge of their cousins was killed by ISIS militants. The man only identified as Omar, they said, is just a re- re- ooh, reciprocity. Re- reciprocity. Yeah. They hurt my family. Now they will hurt theirs. Now we will hurt theirs. So these people who have their family shattered by ISIS are doing the same thing to non combatant families of ISIS fighters. It, remains, it reminds me of a famous quote from Frederick Nietzsche. Whoever fights monsters should see to that in the process he does not become a monster. Well, it's a shame for the innocents, especially the children of this particular group. But it is blowback to those parasites in ISIS, the pawns of the One World Order. It's going to be dumb one way or the other. And many of them are going to be exposed. Who's actually funding them, if that's the case. I've been saying this for years, my friends. They are a New World Order entity. Period. No ends, ifs, or buts. If you want to be in these parasitic organizations, let them let it blow back in their faces when least expected. Because they're nothing more than Uncle Tom's to the deep state. And that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to send me something that's interesting, whatever you do, please address your correspondences with Decorum. You can hit me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Tumblr, YouTube, Freeman's Network, Scene.Life, Minds.com. Net. Wait, minds.com. Wow, almost like a tongue tie there. I got a patron account, patron.com, Loki forward slash Loki Lux three, three eyes. And Future Net dot club. In addition, you can email me at Loki Luck three, which is Loki Luck number three altogether, gmail.com, or to your encrypted types, Loki Luck. Zero three, which is number zero three altogether at protonmail.com. Well, 
My friends, that's all for now. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.